各位记者朋友，大家。Friends from the media, good afternoon. Welcome to today's MFA regular press conference. Now I'm ready to take your questions. 当地时间十一月十四日，习近平主席乘专机抵达利马，出席亚。On November 14 local time, President Xi Jinping arrived in Lima by a special plane to attend the 31st APEC Economic Leaders Meeting and pay a state visit to Peru. Could you further brief us on that? On the afternoon of November 14 local time, President Xi held talks with President Dina Blaorte to have in-depth exchange of views on bilateral ties, cooperation in priority areas, and other issues. The two heads of state witnessed the signing of a cooperation plan on BRI cooperation and optimization protocol of the FTA. The two sides issued a joint declaration on deepening the comprehensive partnership, and they also attended the opening ceremony of Chiang Kai Port via video link. President Xi noted both China and Peru are ancient civilizations. Following the principle of equality, mutual respect, mutual trust, and mutual learning, China-Peru ties have become a model of solidarity and cooperation among countries of different sizes, systems, and cultures. Since its establishment of diplomatic ties 53 years ago, trade and investment cooperation between the two have grown rapidly, bringing tangible benefits to the two peoples. And the two sides need to synergize development strategy, cooperation potential, create a new pattern of political cooperation, boost drive the two wheels of trade and investment, advance the development of traditional and emerging industries, and promote the integration of industrial and supply chains. The two sides should strengthen exchanges of governance experience, shoulder responsibility of mutual learning among civilizations. As required by our times, and carry forward China-Peru friendship from generation to generation. Both sides support multilateralism and oppose protectionism. China supports Peru's presidency of APEC, and we were members of this APEC Economic Leaders Meeting. China stands ready to strengthen communication and cooperation with Peru under the framework of the China Select Forum and make positive contributions. Growth of ties between China and Latin America. This is President Xi's second state visit to Peru, and also the third meeting between the two heads of state within this year. It bears historical significance and is highly relevant to our times. China stands ready to work with Peru, following the important common understandings between the two presidents, to further consolidate political mutual trust, upgrade practical cooperation. And bring our comprehensive strategic partnership to a new level to the benefit of the two peoples. Next question, please. Good afternoon. A question from Reuters. 路透社提问：台湾领导人。蔡英德呃呃赖赖清德可能会在近日。访问友邦，并中途过境美国夏威夷和关岛，你对此有何评论 ？One China principle is a prominent consensus of the international community. The Taiwan authorities use these so-called diplomatic ties to pull political agenda and seek intelligence. That、uh, that actions that attempt、uh, would be are useless because it won't shake the Time, the trend of the time, that there is but one China in the world, and concerning the so-called transit issue of the leaders in Taiwan region, the Chinese side consistently goes against these、uh, arrangements, and we urge the American side to abide by the one China principles and the three commu joint communique, not to allow Lai Qingde. Transit through the United States and stop sending any wrong signal to the Taiwan Dependence Forces and、uh, maintain the stability and peace in the region. Next question, please. 那记者提问，您刚才提到了中国和秘鲁两国元首共同见证了前。You just mentioned that the leaders of China and Peru bore witness to the inauguration ceremony of Chiang Kai Port. 
After running into operation, the port is expected to become an important shipping hub in Latin America and a gateway to the Pacific Ocean. Could you share more details? On November 14th, local time, President Xi Jinping and President Boarte attended via video the inauguration ceremony of Chiang Port. As President Xi Jinping stressed, Chiang Port is not only an important project under the Belt and Road Corporation, but also the first smart and green port in South America. The first phase of the project, when completed, will reduce the sea shipping time from Peru to China to 23 days, thus cutting logistics costs by at least 20 percent. It is expected to generate 4.5 billion U.S. dollars in yearly revenues for Peru and create over 8,000 direct jobs. The completion of Chiang Kai uh, port will greatly consolidate Peru's role as a gateway linking coast and inland and Asia and in Latin America, boosting the overall development and integration of the Latin America and the Caribbean. The port's development plan also includes establishing annual animal rescue services to improve the environment of wetlands, beaches, and habitats, and contributes to local social economic and sustainable development. Chinkai Port is becoming a starting point of um, Inca Trail of the New Era. From Chiang to Shanghai, it is witnessing the coming into shape of a new route crossing land and ocean between Asia and LEC in the new era. China will follow the guidance of the common understanding between the two presidents, uphold the principles of extensive consultation, joint contribution and shared benefits, and work with Peru to ensure the success of Chiang port from construction through management and operations so that it will empower the common development of Pacific's coastal economy, including China and Peru, and truly become a road to prosperity and happiness for all countries. We noted that the statistics released by con competent today show that the annual output of new energy vehicles exceeded 10 million for the first time in China who achieves this target earlier than any other countries. What's your comment on that? We noted relevant report. I'd refer you to Competent 30 for any more specific, and let me stress the 90 percent vehicles purchased by domestic consumers, China's burgeoning new energy vehicle industry domestic, uh, demonstrates not only the potential of China's supersized market, but also the firm resolve of China's uh, of China to advance green and low carbon transition and positively contribute to global uh, carbon neutrality, according to the statistic of the International Energy, Energy, Energy Agency. To realize carbon neutrality, the world will need 45 million NEVs by 2030. China will continue to promote high quality development and high standard opening up, deepen cooperation in the industrial and the supply chains of new energy, advanced te tech innovation, and the development of to offer the more to offer the world more high quality green products and uh, better turbocharge global green development. As Ding Shuixiang, President Xi Jinping's special representative and vice premier of the State Council, said at the World Leaders Climate Action Summit at the 29th conference of the Paris to the UN framework of climate change, the key to solve climate change is the radical transformation of growth models. The international community needs to work together to speed to speed up energy transition in a fair, orderly, and a just way, keep industrial and the supply chains of the new energy industry stable, promote the accessibility, transformation, and innovation of green products and technologies, accelerate the cultivation of new quality productive forces, foster free and fair international environment for green and low carbon investment, trade and technology cooperation, and give a boost to global green and low carbon transition. Next question, please. You just briefed us on President Xi's visit to Peru, in particular the Chiang Kai port. At the same time, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State in Latin American Affairs said that they need to ensure 
China's activities in the region respect the human rights and protect the environment of this region. Do you have any comment? Could you repeat the question, please? Well, President Xi is in Peru for a visit. The Deputy Secretary of State Nichols of the U.S. in charge of the Western uh, Hemisphere said that China needs to respect human rights abide by the local laws and uh, would protect the local environment in this region. Do you have any comments? China has always held the principles of mutual respect, mutual beneficial, uh, mutual help, and win-win uh, cooperation to uh, develop its relation with Latin American countries. Our relations is not targeting to any third parties and will not impair any other third country's interests. We believe that countries in this region is capable of choosing their own partners dealing with uh, economic cooperation. The cooperation between China and countries in this region bring true benefits to countries um, in America, and uh, I think I've I made my point by listing many beautiful examples of our cooperation. Next question, please. Today is the anniversary of the uh, signing of RCEP. Can you introduce us about the uh, the role China plays in 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 this history? RCP covers more population and involves more trade than any other free trade agreements in today's world. Since its official implementation, RCEP has been delivering institutional benefits such as easing tariffs, streaming customs, clearance, and facilitating trade and investment. It has made regional industrial and supply chains more stable and unimpeded and uh, open up a new phase of high-quality development of regional economy. As the largest economy among RC RCEP members, China is an active promoter of high-quality implementation of the agreement. In the first three quarters of this year, imports and export between China and other RCEP, RCEP members totaled 9.63 trillion RMB, up by 4.5% in 2023. Non-financial direct investment from China to other members reached 18.06 U.S. dollar billion billion U.S. dollar, up by 26%, which is 14 percentage points higher than the growth rate of China's investment globally. As this year's now ASEAN rot uh, rotating chair of RCEP, China has played a leading role in high standard compliance with RCEP and made great contribution to enhancing the implementation of RCEP in the region. We will stay committed to advancing comprehensive and high quality implementation, injecting more impetus into regional trade growth and economic integration, and to bring more tangible benefits to the people in this region. Next question, please. Are there any more questions? That will be the end of today's press briefing. I wish you a good and beautiful weekend.